Welcome, my beloved friends, viewers, and subscribers. Appreciate you joining with us. And this is the third Sunday of June, and we're in the South Carolina mountains. As you can see, I made a stop by Hardy's this morning and had a good biscuit and gravy from them, and uh, which I enjoyed and was thankful for. And so I know many of you love uh, uh, some good ham biscuits too and some gravy. And it's a, it's a wonderful experience, I think, to have good gravy and good country ham. And, uh, and so uh, I think you're a loser if you don't have it. Well, let's uh, look on into our Bibles this morning to the book of John, chapter number 15. We're down in verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sins, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Now, brother, you could just stop right there <clears throat> and open up the history books about verse 21. All these things they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Brother, you can start to reading about the persecution of the church in the early book of Acts and uh, where they have hated the followers and believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've never read J.M.'s Carol, The Trail of Blood, you ought to buy it and read it. And, uh, <clears throat> and if any of you don't know where to find that, just uh, you can look it up online, I'm sure, and find that and read it. But if you just can't find one, uh, send me Send me word and I'll an address. I'll get one and send it to you. Uh, it's it's quite a book of the of the of the martyrs and of the persecutions of the Christians down through the dark ages. J. M. Carroll's The Trail of Blood, and it's uh it is uh, quite quite the eye opener when you read that of all the persecution that's been heaped upon the Christians and the true believers all down through the ages. Various countries today, Christians are still persecuted. To some degree in America, we're now receiving persecution, fired from jobs, prohibited from having jobs because we will not denounce our Christian faith and go along with some of the new stuff they've rolled out. Uh, and rest assured, the world uh, hates the Lord and they're going to hate those of us who follow him. They'll not want us around because we walk with the Lord. Uh, they just can't stand it when we say that's sin. We're not going to participate in that. And it upsets them and makes them mad. They think, well, we'll just get rid of you. Well, they treated the Lord the same way. Uh, they hated him uh, uh, without any doubt. Uh, let's, let's read on right here in verse 21, 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Notice that. Uh, his life among them, no doubt his words among them, showed forth their sin. As we were told in the first book, the first chapter of John, the light shineth into darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Neither cometh they to the light, because their deeds were evil. That's exactly why they hate the Lord, because their deeds were evil and his were good and right. And therefore they hated him. And uh, But because he came and the light shone, their sin was without a cloak. There was no covering for it. Uh, now that he has come, there is there's no cover for it. And when he has presented himself as he did to the Jewish nation, and he did, we've been reading about it, studying about it all through these chapters. And we're right now just before the, uh, just before he's arrested and carried away to be crucified, as far as uh, phys uh, literal history goes. But right now we see that he has presented himself to the Jews. He has told them who he is. He did claim to be God. He said, "I and my Father are one." And we're going to read on down right here in the verse two, uh, uh, and see some more of this of the his oneness with the father and uh so uh and he and he taught them the truth of the old testament scriptures he also showed them how uh misguided they were about some of their uh teachings based upon the scriptures and he showed them the true intent 
and nature of the law. And all that was more than they could stand. And they said, well, this, the world has gone after him. We've got to stop this. Uh, they claimed they wanted the Messiah to come. He was there. But it wasn't what they wanted. They wanted what they wanted. They wanted a strong, uh, probably military and political leader who would stand up to the Romans and defeat the Romans and drive them back, and that their, uh, uh, their uh, country would rule over the rest of the world, as is found in the Old Testament scriptures, uh, and the temple to be built and all these things. Uh, they wanted that kind of a, of a leader. Uh, but little did they know, he came meek and lowly, sitting upon the coal of an ass, which was also prophesied. And they... they they saw him and rejected him because it wasn't what they wanted. Uh, too many times in many political circles and also in some church circles, there may be a, 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 a wonderful man, a good man, who might be running for office. Might be a good man they brought there to candidate for the pastorship. And there'll be some in the church say, so, well, he don't fit in here, we can't have him. Might be some in the uh, the political party said, well, he doesn't quite fit in to what we've got going on here. And uh, we don't want him here. So it was in a big time way with the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't fit into their plans. He was God with his own plans. He was not coming here to fit into their plans. It was what they wanted. It wasn't that they wanted the will of God or the, or the, or the man of God nor the Son of God. They didn't want that. They wanted someone whom they could buddy up to and whom they could help run the, run the world and be, uh, and be high in the offices and doing so. That was what they wanted. They wanted the prestige. They wanted the power. They wanted the glory that went with that. It's to be shared by no man. But that's what they wanted, themselves, to be of high esteem versus to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ that was not part of their plan. That was not part of their doings. Uh, they'd have none of that. But when Jesus came and then showed himself unto them and they rejected him, that showed their sins without excuse, without a way to hide it. And it also fulfilled the scripture uh, that he would come into his own, which would receive him not. And then he had turned unto the Gentiles and, and the Gentiles would receive him. What a blessing that they did. What a blessing for we Gentiles that our forefathers did receive the gospel that has been preached to us and handed down to us. Oh, my friends, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The greatest thing that you have if you know the Lord is your salvation. The greatest thing you can leave to your children is your uh, testimony in the Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest thing you could do for your children while they're little is to take them to church and teach them the Word of God. That's the greatest thing you could do for them. Oh, I know we labor to leave them something. We labor to leave them money. We labor to leave them houses and lands. We labor to get them through college so they'll be able to have plenty in this world. Uh, but my friends, the greatest thing will be to make sure they know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, above all else. Some of those things I've said are well and good. I've done some of all of that. I tend to do more of it. But my friends, the greatest thing I pray for my children is that they will live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, uh, because we've had a great heritage handed to us and the Lord Jesus Christ. We've had a great, great uh, matter given to us and the forgiveness of our sins and the teaching of Jesus Christ. It's either heaven or hell, no in between. And Jesus Christ separates the one from the other. That's the greatest thing you'll ever leave your children or you'll ever teach them. Not that you should not teach them other things, but you should not neglect the greatest thing. And so uh, they, uh, the Jews rejected. Had he not presented himself to the Jews or had they accepted him, I wonder if the Gentiles would have ever have had the gospel as we've had it these last 2,000 plus years. But we have had it. Our forefathers have had it. And my grandparents had it. My great-grandparents had it. And thankfully, uh, I have it. My brothers and sisters 
have testimony that they as well have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm glad to hear that for them. I really am. Well, my friends, let's read on. Um, and uh, verse 23, He that hateth me, hateth my father also. You can't hate one about hating the other. You cannot do that. I've heard, uh, heard an old man out on visitation one morning. <clears throat> he said, I don't believe Jesus was God. Well, my friends, he doesn't know God. <clears throat> he tried to tell as he did, but he did not because he denied the Son. And a matter of fact, anyone who hates the Son hates the Father. He that hateth me hateth my Father also. So truly did the Lord say. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. Uh, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my Father. You see, the works that Jesus Christ did among them showed forth their sin, as I've already labored the point, I think. And that which he did among them that no other man could do, and no other man did, uh, took away the, any any excuse they could have ever have had like paul said in the book of romans therefore thou art inexcusable O man uh, we are inexcusable uh, we have no excuse even the heaven declares the glory of god so there's none without an excuse and i've heard the age-old question what about the heathen in africa they've never heard the gospel of jesus christ uh, well, if they die without him, they go to hell. That's exactly what will happen to them. Because that which may be known of God, the conscience also bearing them witness, and the heavens declaring the glory of God, tell them that there is a God and that there is a Savior. And, uh, and I, I firmly believe that uh, those who are seeking, that one way or the other, the Lord gets somebody to them with the gospel. And so... Uh, if you study some of those ancient uh, tribes of Africa, you'll find that in ancient day there were some Christians among them. What about that? Isn't that amazing? Uh, but uh, nonetheless, let's read on right here. Uh, but he did those works. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their laws. They hate me without a cause. Now that's found in the book of Psalms 35:19. Also in Psalms chapter 69 and verse 4, uh, that they hated him without a cause. You think, why would they hate God? We've just read why. Because he showed unto them their true sinful nature. He showed unto them uh, that their uh, false religion was as fake as it could be. And when he yanked their uh, fig leaves off these Pharisees, so to speak, they hated him the more and the more. Because they realized they had a form of the religion but denying the Lord God therein. And so it is. Many people have religion, but do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. A people with a religion will die and go to hell just as any sinner will. You must know the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is not to so-called uh, religious people. Uh, a lot of religious people in the world, but they're not going to heaven unless they know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It takes more than religion to get a man in. It takes the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they hate him without a cause. Uh, there was no cause. He had done them no wrong. He had not burnt their houses. He had not uh, slain their children. He had not vexed them with plagues. He had not stolen their money from them. He had not taken away from them uh, everything that, in this earth that they had, as Hitler did to many of the Jews. Uh, no, uh, the Lord had not done a thing. Matter of fact, what did he do? He fed them. He healed the blind. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. Uh, he told them of things of another world and of a world yet to come. He, he, uh, he, did, he did all that was good for them. He forgave their sins, as in the Samaritan woman by the well, as in also the uh, woman in John chapter 8, taken in, in the act of sinful adultery. That's what he had done among them. He had come even though Peter denied him. Yet he asked him later on, Peter, do you love me? What about that? Uh, that's the kind of God that we serve. Uh, a God of love and a God that forgives us. Not one who has wronged us. Well, my friends, uh, again, it's so true what the psalmist said and what's repeated right here. They hated him without a cause. 
And many times today, if you live with the Lord, sometimes people still don't like you. The reason is, they don't like the Lord. And that's why they don't like we who serve Him sometimes. My friends, if you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer you do so today. Call upon Him while He is nigh. Thank you.